prostatic carcinoma, also called SNR, adenocarcinoma, is very common malignant neoplasm of prostatic secretory cells. The diagnosis is based on a morphological, architectural, nuclear, cytoplasmic, and intraluminal features. Most of the cases of SNR adenocarcinoma arise in the peripheral parts of the prostatic gland, and therefore it can be easily sampled um, via core biopsies, and it can be also palpated in uh, per rectum exam. So this is the prostate gland, and these parts, um, those are normal acini. Uh, they are slightly larger, they are irregular, uh, we can see sometimes these papillary uh, prominences, and uh, all of these structures, this is adenocarcinoma. It is a kind of paradox because uh, you would expect uh, carcinoma to look like um, irregular or atypical, but uh, prostatic adenocarcinoma is kind of exception because these malignant structures are actually much more uniform and uh, uh, the SNI are re more regular and actually more benign looking than the benign parenchyma. The malignant component here is uh, composed of densely packed back-to-back -back small uh, glands or SNI and on higher magnification we can see that these small SNI are composed of just one layer of the SNR cells without uh, the layer of the basal cells unlike the normal uh, benign prostatic SNI. The SNI are very close to one another and uh, this is also called back-to-back -back glands. The cells are very uniform and actually quite benign looking which is a which is a paradox and uh, the nuclei are typically round with uh, prominent nucleoli. This is a very useful sign uh, to see prominent nucleoli, sometimes also cherry red, slightly eosinophilic large nuclei. Uh, that is not what we see here in this case, but uh, still the nuclei are quite, uh, quite prominent. Another useful feature is the presence of crystalloid um, in the lumina of these uh, small SNI. Those are these eosinophilic amorphous structures here and also here. If we want to be sure that the basal cells are not present, we can run immunohistochemistry for either P63 or a high molecular weight keratin which would stain the basal cells and uh, both of these nuclei, uh, both of these immunohistochemical stains would be negative in this case and they would be positive uh, in the benign part of the prostatic parenchyma, uh, for example here. According to the architectural patterns, uh, we can grade the prostatic adeno adenocarcinoma and uh, traditionally we use the Gleason grade and according to the last WHO classification we also use uh, the grade groups. So we, here we have the paper written by John Hopkins Hospital which is very useful uh, in the grading of the SNR adenocarcinoma. Gleason grading system is widely accepted and uh, based on the glandular architecture patterns, um, usually at low or intermediate magnification, we can classify the carcinoma into the basic five grades. In the core biopsies, we then recognize the most prominent grade, which is the first number, and then the highest grade, which is the second number, and the sum of these two numbers then creates the Gleason grade. We always mention both numbers and the sum. So for example, we can say the Gleason score is 3 plus 3 equals 6 or 3 plus 4 equals 7. But there is one important but and uh, that is the fact and that in the core biopsies you cannot recognize the Gleason patterns 1 and 2. Gleason pattern 1 is kind of controversial and some people don't use it. Gleason pattern 2 is very rare and it is typically found in the transformation zone and you need to have the larger amount of the, of the parenchyma uh, to diagnose the Gleason pattern 2. So in the core biopsies, the lower pattern you can diagnose is basically 3. So the well-differentiated adenocarcinoma in the core biopsy is uh, 3 plus 3 equals 6. So the Gleason score 6 is actually the best you can get, the well-differentiated uh, adenocarcinoma. The poorly differentiated high-grade uh, 
carcinoma is then uh, Gleason score of 5 plus 5 equals 10. And this is kind of counterintuitive because if you tell your patients that they have Gleason 6 adenocarcinoma out of 10, they would expect that they have something in between, some, some kind of like moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma, and they would expect that, that the prognosis is not very good. And uh, that is not the case because well differentiated Gleason score 3 plus 3 adenocarcinomas are very slow growing and um, those are not aggressive tumors and therefore new grading system was introduced and the, uh, that is called the grade groups. So in this type of grading well differentiated adenocarcinoma Gleason score 3 plus 3 is grade group 1 and everybody's happy. Now how do we diagnose these Gleason patterns? Uh, this is the grade paper and uh, we have a nice pictures here. So the well differentiated carcinoma is composed of uh, a well circumscribed small acini which are back to back and the glands are well formed well <clears throat> we can circumscribe each of the gland there is no fusion of the glands there is no solid pattern here we see the typical crystalloids and some of these glands can actually look quite irregular as in this example but this is not a fusion of the glands this is just the just the irregular glands on the cut surface uh, on the cut surface Gleason pattern form is made out of fused glands but we can still appreciate the lumina formation uh, but uh, we cannot encircle the glands and the cribriform structures uh, is also typical for the grade for or pattern for Gleason grade Gleason pattern 5 is then um, um, made out of uh, solid nests without lumina formation, without glandular formation uh, and uh, Gleason pattern 5 is all when we also see very poorly formed uh, lumina-like structures but those are not real lumina, those are just vacuoles in the cytoplasm. Um, Comino necrosis as in this example is also Gleason pattern 5. So this was a, a short introduction into prostatic adenocarcinoma histopathology. Uh, in the real life, the situation is slightly more difficult because we have a lot of variants of adenocarcinoma. Some of them look like uh, normal benign glands and they can simulate uh, normal prostatic parenchyma. Thanks for watching.